Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a TDM map selection voting system and stuff, or I mean, pretty much it's just a general map voting system and stuff. It's not necessarily just specifically for um TDM and stuff. Um, what's up to everyone who's watching the premiere right now? This is not live. What's up to everyone who's watching? Thank y'all for you know watching this not stream, watching the premiere, watching the video, whatever. Um, thank you guys for all the love and support on all my videos and stuff. Really do appreciate it. We just hit six thousand subscribers. Thank you to all the love and support. Really do appreciate it and stuff. We on our way to 10,000. Let's keep it going. 4,000 more to go. But anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Okay, so first things first, Um, we need to create a remote event. Let's go ahead and knock the easy stuff out of the way, then get into the scripting. So let's insert a remote event into replicated storage, right? I'm going to name this remote event map voting events, right? Boom. Then I'm going to head over to server storage and create two folders. So I'm going to insert, actually make one folder. In total, we're going to make two, but we're, we're just going to make one for now. So you want to name the first folder map voting, right? You're going to have a folder inside of the map voting folder for each map you have. So I'm going to insert a folder into set folder. I'm going to name this folder map one because this is, you know, oh, sorry, sorry, not, sorry, not a folder. Don't insert a folder into, into the folder. Insert a string value into the folder. Yeah, sorry. Or wait, no. Mm, or is it more so like no? Never wait. Number number sorry. Okay, sorry sorry. Insert a number value. Number value. I'm tripping. Insert a number value. Right. You're going to want to put the name of said value. You're going to set that name as the name of the map. So we're going to put map one. And then by default, the value should be set to zero. Right. So pretty much whenever a player is voting on the UI and they click, say they click the button for map one this is going to change from zero to one or is this generally going to increase by one that's how we're going to make it so we can just duplicate this control d then just rename this map to boom then we can duplicate this folder boom and then we can simply just rename this map ids and if you can tell this is this folder is simply just to, it simply stores all of the um tele like teleport ids for um each map and stuff because i'm assuming your game um a lot like you know like when they select the map it's going to teleport them to the place if not then you could just teleport people wherever on the map and stuff or however you handle changing the map and all that but yeah so you would simply keep the same the same idea map one and map two the only difference is for the value you're going to set the value to whatever the place id is i have a video on how to get a, a place id if you don't know how to get a place id i have a video on that but yes you would just throw your place id in there so boom you would just throw your place ID. i'm just throwing random numbers in there by the way so i so i would just put in my place ids and boom just like that we are done with the folders and then of course if you wanted three maps you just add a third one name it map three same thing map ids just keep just keep adding it that simple right so we can close that. Remember, both of those folders should be inside of server storage, right? Then let's go ahead and create a basic, simple UI real quick for map voting. So if we insert a screen UI into starter UI, right? By default, we want it to be enabled and stuff. And then we're going to disable reset on spawn. We're going to, of course, ins I must have clicked so fast. I didn't, even, I didn't even see the options pop up anyway. So I'm going to click the frame, right? Let's drag this to like the middle. You guys can customize it whatever way you want. This is just what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to make the size. I'm going to make it like by... I don't know, like 400, 400, but like maybe 300 or like 200. Yeah, like 400 by 200, right? And then we're going to name set frame map voting frame. Boom, right? Then we're going to just, you know, like I said, we're going to do some customization. So I'm just going to make it, you know, like a nice dark black, maybe make it a little transparent. Boom, right? Um, Let me get a little darker, actually. Uh, let's see, like, yeah, let's just make it like real, real nice and dark, right? So then you're going to want to insert a local script into the uh, screen GUI. Boom. And then you guys can name said script map voting script and in parentheses put local. We're going to come back to the script. I just wanted to go ahead and uh, insert it and then, uh, you know, name it and everything so people don't get confused as to where to put it. Then we're going to insert a frame into this frame, right? So we're going to insert a frame into our already made frame. And then we're going to name this frame maps frame. So maps frame, pretty much this frame is going to hold all the buttons to where we can actually vote. Okay, I want it to be um, handled automatically. So let me make the size like 300, um, and then, you know, just, you know, just scale it, whatever. Um, you want the background transparency to be, you know, one, because I would understand why you would want to see the background. Unless like you want a background, it's up to you stuff right so then you're going to insert a ui grid layout and stuff this will manage the size and but the size and position of all the buttons so make this like i don't know 
50, like 50 and 70. And then I'm gonna insert a text button, right? You can use text buttons or uh, image buttons. So it just decides accordingly. Okay, so maybe like make this, make this like 100 and make this like 50. I'm gonna go with like 100 by 50, right? So we have our first button. So we can rename this to like map one text button. Boom, then you're gonna set the name of the text to whatever, you know, the name of the first map is. So map, just, I'm just going to map one, right? By the way, the names do have to match, by the way. Like UI doesn't matter, but like these names have to match. So yeah. And honestly, it would just make more sense if everything just matches it. If I'm just being honest, that wouldn't understand why you would want it to be, you know, be different or anything. So you can make the color like, I don't know, like a nice dark gray, right? Um, And then for the text stroke, maybe just make it like white and stuff, right? Because we're going to change the color based on like, when a player selects the map so they know like the, like which map they have selected. And then they can just duplicate this and it all, as you guys can see, it already spaced it out for me and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to change it just so there's like a little space in between. So boom, we have map one text button and then we have ourselves map two text button. Then of course, update the text down here. Boom. Oh, sorry. And then boom, right? Then we're simply going to insert a text label into the map voting frame, the main frame, right? A text label, you could you could just drag it to the top, really. Um, then you're just gonna name this. You could just, I mean, you could just put select the map. Like this is honestly kind of optional, if I'm being honest. Like it's just simply, you know, you just let people know, like, you know, for a little people, a little bit of slow people, you know what I'm saying? Just let them know, like, you know, this is where you go to vote and stuff, in case they just for whatever reason they're confused. So you just put like, I don't know, select the map. Um. Change the background color a little, you know what I'm saying? Maybe give it a maybe give it a border, you know what I'm saying? Maybe give it like a border. Or no, because that kind of sticks out, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, something like that, maybe. So you just put like select the map, and then you could just name the text label uh map voting text label. Map voting text label. And with that guys, we are done setting up the UI. Now we can get into the actual scripting, right? So let's see, let's see. Um Let's see, how do I want to go about this? Um, so what we could do is, right, we can go ahead and get create a variable for the map voting GUI. So let's say local map voting GUI. Remember the local script should be parented to the service, I mean, sorry, to the screen GUI. So we're going to just simply say screen script.parent. Then we're going to get the map map voting remote events. So local map voting events. I don't know why I just can't talk today. Anyway, we're going to say game to replicate a storage, wait for child, map voting event, right? Then you're going to set up a for loop. You're going to simply say for i, comma, v in pairs. You're going to say map voting gui. Oh, sorry, that, sorry, that map voting frame, that maps frame, get children. We need to get the button so that whenever a player presses them, you know, triggers the function. So enter, right? Then you're going to say if v is a text button we need to confirm it's a text button it's not the ui grid layout so if use a text button enter you're going to say v dot mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter right then you're going to say for i2 v2 we need to use a second loop in pairs map voting gy we're literally going to do the same thing so map voting frame that maps frame get children enter this time you're going to say if v2 is a text button same thing just need just need to double check right then you're going to set the color. You're going to say v2.text color 3. You go to color 3. Is equal to color 3.new 0, 0, 0. Now, what this is doing is this is going to set all of the buttons back to black. Then we're going to set the one you just, the player, the one the player just selected. We're going to change the text color to gold or whatever color you choose to let the players know, okay, you have selected this map and stuff just so they're like, oh, okay. In case, like, I don't know, they accidentally select a map or something. Right. And then we can go after the two ends. Right, then we can say v dot text color. Make sure you pay attention to if it's v two or v. Right, is equal to color three dot new. Then we're gonna set it to gold to so one comma one comma zero. Boom. Or remember whatever color you want. But then map voting event by your server in quotation marks. Put map vote. That's the name of the event. Comma. Then you're gonna send over the name of the map. So v dot text. Oh yeah, actually never mind. I, yeah, so forget what I said. Okay, so for the buttons, make sure the text. Matt, like is the exact name of the map instead of like you know here and stuff like you just want all the names to match that's just the point you just want like all the names to match and stuff right so yeah so just like that we finished the local script we can then move on to the server script right so we can insert a server script into server script service i can rename said script map voting script in parentheses put server boom we can delete print hello world right 
then we can create some variables first things first let's get the teleport service let's say local tps equal to game get service teleport service right then enter we can get the map voting remote event let's say local map voting event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child map voting event then i'm going to get the map voting folder i'm going to get both the folders so first things first let's get the map voting folder map voting folder equal to game that server storage wait for child then you're going to say map voting and then you can really just copy and paste this so just select it um control c control v rename this simply to map ids folder and then just get the ids map ids folder boom now we can set up the function so we're going to need three different functions for this right the first things first we're going to have when the player joins we're going to keep track of whatever map they currently have selected we need to do this so that we can know like okay the player already had a map selected beforehand so we need to take you know take one vote away like if a player selected map one for example right but then they want to change their vote to map two we need to check and see if they already selected a map and we would see that they selected map one so we're like okay we need to take one for map one and then give our give a or do plus one to map two if that makes sense right um i can do another part two and stuff add on some more stuff to this guy I, I already can see people asking questions about like oh how do you do this how do you make a you know like how do you integrate this with a round system and stuff i'm just showing you guys the basic idea because i don't want to do i don't want to put too much work into something i'm not sure you guys you know really want to see so i just gotta wait to see how you guys you know if you guys missed the video or not anyway <clears throat> so we're gonna set up a function for players during the game we're gonna say game that players that player added connect function in parentheses put plr for player then enter right and then let me just double check okay i'm good right so then set the function we're going to create a variable for map selected we're going to say local map selected is equal to instance dot new in parentheses and then in quotation marks you're going to put string value you're going to parent it to the player to how we keep track of whatever map selected to the player whatever map the player has currently selected <clears throat> if there is one so we're going to say map selected dot name is equal to map selected in quotation marks then map selected that value by default will just be quotation, uh just quotation marks like pretty much nothing so then i'm gonna set the second function i'm gonna say map voting event that on server event connect function in parentheses put plr stuff for player comma event type and comma arg one sure for argument number one then enter right you're gonna say if event type is equal to map vote that's the name of the event then enter right you're gonna create a variable you're gonna say local map name is equal to argument number one or sorry is equal argument number one right then you're going to say if player dot map selected dot value is nil equal to quotation like quotation marks this pretty much means that like this means that the player has a map selected that's what we're saying so if a player does have a map selected then we're going to proceed right then into oh sorry then enter right you're going to say map you're going to say map voting folder my first child player that map selected that value the whole point is it's supposed to be automated and stuff so you can just simply add maps instead of the map folding folders and stuff that value is less than equal to one so it just takes one away and then we're going to add one so we're going to say player dot map selected that value is equal to map name we're going to update it oh sorry map name right then we're going to just do the same thing here so you can just control c control v the only difference with this is um you literally you can delete you can replace this entire thing inside the parentheses with simply just map name and then instead of the minus you would just change it to a plus right and then just like that we're done with the second function now for the third function we're going to wait five seconds now we're going to wait five seconds okay so the way this works is to explain this right when a player first joins the game as you guys recall we have the ui enabled by default so when a player so when the first player joins the game the ui should be enabled right so pretty much the way this is going to be is right <clears throat> The way this is going to be right um is that when a player first joins it's going to you know we're going to wait five seconds or however many seconds you put you would put your, your duration here i'm obviously not about, not about to put 200 seconds and then sit here with you guys for 200 seconds and then wait that don't nobody get time for that right so i'm just going to put five seconds and then after those five seconds it's going to pretty much count how many votes each map has and then whichever map has the most votes it will go with that if it's a tie it'll just um oh sorry if it's a tie it'll just go with the, whatever the default map is which you can set manually <clears throat> so we're going to create two variables we're going to say local map vote by default you want this to be set to zero right and then or sorry not map vote max vote and stuff this is how you know like the maximum amount of votes a map has stuff. and then you're going to see how this plays into it then we're going to create a selected map 
it's pretty much means the map like the server has selected via voting and stuff by default you're gonna set this to a default map so whatever map you want to go with so i'm just going map one as the default map pretty much if there's a tie it'll just go with whatever map this is right um so then i'm gonna set up a farther but i'm gonna say for iv and pairs map voting folder get children enter right i'm gonna say local current vote is equal to v dot value right then i'm gonna say if current vote is greater than max votes and stuff which means of course you know more than then we would say max vote is equal to current vote we would set we would update it then we would say selected map is equal to v dot name so we know the, the name of the map then we set up a second file we would say for i2 this is the teleport the players if you don't want to teleport players to another map then no need for this but yeah we would say in pairs and then this time you would go with map ids folder you would say get children enter and then you're simply going to say if v2.name is equal to selected map enter you're going to say tps teleport async to teleport a group of players then you're going to say v2.value comma game dot players get children we're going to tell for all the players now let me just make this known you cannot test teleport you cannot test teleports inside of studio you have to test it in actual servers so publish your thing and go test it in actual server i always have people asking me the same question but as always if you guys don't access to any of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description so in about a second there should be something up okay or maybe not or maybe not it should have given me like an error message and all honesty but anyway let's test this okay so as you guys can see okay so it's working so far so as you guys can see it's changing color based on which one i have selected and stuff um so if we go here right let's see map voting uh as you guys can see map one has one because i currently have it selected now if i select map two map one should be zero map two should be one there we go so that's working so far not too sure what's the issue not, not too sure what the issue is with this though if current vote is greater than max vote um hmm. Hmm. Oh, strange. Oh, oh, wait. Er, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, I see this. I see this. Okay, okay, okay. I actually like. Okay, so I want you to copy and paste the four I do loop. I actually did this wrong. Okay, so just copy that. You want to put it on the outside of the statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's assuming that there's a current thing. Because you also have to account for if if um if it's a tie and then it just and it just teleports teleports the players to the default map. So yeah, I forgot to do it like that. Okay, so so it's gonna give me an error. Yeah, there we go. Error. This this is the error you want to see. It's gonna say fail teleport because you cannot teleport in the studio. I still don't understand how people see this error and still are somehow confused on what to do. Like it literally says cannot teleport in the studio. So common sense would say you know you teleport in a regular server, but not everyone has common sense. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, definitely leave a like and subscribe. If you need help with anything and stuff that related to my scripts and stuff. Feel free to join my Discord server, link you can find in the description. We got over 2,000 members. I got helpers and staff members as well as I help myself. So I got y'all. So if you need anything else for all the love and support I'm showing, really do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get to 6.1. Let's get let's get to 6.1 thousand. So let's you know keep going. We are on the way to 10,000 subs. Really do appreciate all the love and support I'm showing. All my channel members, Discord subscribers, really do appreciate it. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.